Um, there is a Thanksgiving service on Wednesday the 24th at 7 p.m. at South Fork First this year. And then also Camp Allegheny is having a church barbecue. Uh, chicken. A chicken barbecue. A chicken barbecue um, on the 24th as well as this Sunday. Um, they're $10 per plate and that benefits Camp Allegheny. Um, and then the Christian Home is having a basket party on November 20th. They are looking for donations as well as if you're interested in going. Admission is $12. Um, and there's more information up here on the pulpit if you would like some more information on that. I see Rebecca is holding up. Boss Pops. So um, October 20th is the day to go shopping, and you get a 25% off shopping price for everything you purchase. Um, we get 10% of the sales. You just have to say that it's used, um, I'm sorry, uh, United, well, not all of United Methodist Youth Fellowship, and we get 10%, um, and these are only $5, so if you want to see me, go ahead, you can. Um, I'll have next week as well. So the 20th is, I believe, There is the women's um, Chinese the women's Chinese option is also on the 24th, Sunday the 24th at 5 p.m. downstairs. There will be dinner, and then there will be the action following that, which we will be um, planning more for that on Tuesday at 6 p.m. at the, the regular meeting. Billy, how do you know? Okay. Any other announcements that I need to be aware of? Set your hearts for worship. today is from um, page 362. If you stand with us, we'll be singing Nothing But the Blood.
told me to meet me, Bailey, when you said good looking. Yeah, I knew that was going to be. Hey, we uh, taught this, our uh, grace course is a thing. We taught it to uh, whatever her name is. <laughs> You're falling in love with me, aren't you? I met your wife. <laughs> oh. Anyway, we talked about faithfulness. Um, you know, I think that's that's one of the biggest things in life, just being faithful. You know, to whatever it costs. Whether it's faithful to your wife, faithful to the church, or just faithful.
Trina. Thank you, you and the ladies who make all the spaghetti and everything for the football games. They appreciate it more than you guys will ever know. And even playing possibly overeating on college field. So I think that's yeah. a good yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Hey, it was a pleasure um, to be able to do that service again. You know, like I said, that's that real possibility. That's my last trip around the block. And, uh, you know, it's been 26 years of being able to do that, you know. Don't worry, when I need a backup, I'm in the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what Coach Myers said, too. I said, don't say that too loud. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. What else? Hey, Bella. Hey, you know what? I got a gal in, in Bible school whose name is Stella. Stella. So I call her Stella Bella, and I call you Bella Stella. <laughs> so there you go. All right, tell me what you're going to say. To be here in church. Yeah. You know what, baby? You know, you are you are what church is all about. Amen. You know, and uh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Rebecca. So we just got home this morning from Team Adrian Canyon, and we got to spend quality time with our teenagers, which was very difficult. <laughs> and we got to the Team Adrian Canyon yesterday. You couldn't see five feet in front of you. So we walked down. truck ran into the house while he was asleep on the uh, recliner um, and Butch passed away. Um, hard to believe that something like that would happen. When the house is 40 yards from the road. Yeah, the house is 40 yards from the road there. Uh, but if there was ever a testimony of you got to be ready because you don't know what's going to happen next, uh, that's, that's one. Uh, Wednesday, Tiffany is going to have her surgery. Um, now, he told me that the other two spots they believe is benign, though. So let's give the Lord a hand for that first. And so um, we're going to be in prayer Wednesday for her as she goes through the surgery. All right? And I hope I'm not too bold, Mark and Nancy, but. I emailed her and you know I just because her and I have been on this journey and you know I told them I said everything in their life is going to change nothing's going to be the same again and you know but if you allow that um, not that I'd want anybody to run that run that same road 
But if you allow it, you will become closer together and closer to God. And you have work. And God can use you through that. And God can use you through it, you know, for sure. They know what times are. 830. 8.30. 8.30 Wednesday? Okay. All right, so let's, let's covenant in prayer uh, that we lift up Tiffany and Rob. And it'll be 8.30. Sure. Um, I called my brother in between Sunday school and coming here. Um, my sister-in-law was taken, they had to take her, and she's in surgery still right now. They said her leg got really bad. And um, so Ron said, they got, as soon as he got her to the hospital, they got a team together immediately and took her straight to surgery. Wow. So um, please keep my sister-in-law, Anita. And also remember the family of my Aunt Sue, Brad and my wife. Yeah, she um, passed too. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, the Groves and uh, myself and the Waters family, uh, our cousin passed away, had that service yesterday. Um, Sherry's aunt passed away. I'm going to have that service Wednesday. Um, yeah, so keep those families in your prayers also. Um, Deb Culver told me this morning her brother Tom Bracken is not well at all. No, that was Phyllis. Oh, <coughs> no, no, Clara. Oh, Clara, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was Clara. I'm sorry. It's, yeah, but most of us know Tom. I've got the wrong person there. I'm sorry. I told you Wednesday night at the board meeting, don't trust my brain because um, it's just not working right. Gracie. search of their own identity in church. And I think it's something to pray for that they, they're trying different yeah. ones in their community and eh, they're not finding exactly what they're looking for and maybe a little bit of help to uh, let them do that. They're, they're trying yeah. to stay in their nice little community. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, but I, I did try some and it doesn't fit. And, uh, yeah. But I will tell you in this world that we live in nowadays, you don't get much of a chance because they do have soccer this morning in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So yeah. the world well, doesn't allow you with soccer and swimming yeah. and football and everything. Yeah. The Sunday mornings are tied up. And, what a shame. But yeah, yeah. But I don't remember that in our era. Yeah, no, no, that wouldn't have happened. No. And you went through your infusion. Yeah, I was in, yeah, I got my fifth one and when you said about something humorous, I guess I can add this. I kind of, Debbie will tell you, they come up with a new IV to give me before my infusion, and I kind of got that place wrapped around my finger now. I'm getting well known. <laughs> makes you a little, <laughs> it makes you a little, makes you a little happy before you get the infusion, so it makes me quite happy. So I don't know. I got eight more infusions. I could be mayor now there before. <laughs> Ray Buckgarter was in uh, first service this morning. That's the first he's been out. He is done with his treatments, and he's just waiting for results. So, good, good, good. All right, Trace? for tomorrow though. Yeah. Keep Bill in prayer. I saw another hand somewhere. Tim. Uh, my son and his wife, four or six month old baby, four year old and thirteen year old all recovering from COVID. And uh, looking around here you know this breaks my heart seeing this church like this so sparse. Sorry. 
Kevin Flynn um, fell out of a tree, a uh, tree, and tree, and what you tell me, levitated and stress there. He said there's ten stress fractures in his spine and broken ribs and a crushed kidney. had joys in your house. Thank you for that. Thank you for the intervention in life. We've had concerns. And it seems, it seems like there are so many things going on that it is just overwhelming. And it's so easy to get distracted from what is really important. And Father, we just ask for grace today. I'll tell you, there's 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 a there's people that have lost uh, family members, not lost, that family members have passed away. Excuse me for saying that. But, uh, there's there's people awaiting surgeries. There's people with diseases. There's people who've been involved in accidents. And it, it just seems like it never quits. And Father, we just hold them up to you today. And as Tim mentioned, we hold this church up to you. And, and I, got, I, I got to be honest, I, I feel the same way. You know, I, I, I look over the, over the church and, and I see what it once was and, and how it isn't now. And it's easy to blame, you know, on, on different things. But, uh, Father, you know, without your help, you know, we're, our, our, our efforts are in vain. We pray for this country for the same reasons. You know, I, I, 
it's hard for me to understand all the, the hatred that's out there. It's just hard for me to understand. Now we ask for our leaders to have uh, you know, a divine purpose in their life instead of their own purpose. And as, as, as we look into the Word today, you know, I, you know, I think, you know, man, I'll tell you what, I, I think that that word was just recorded for me today. We just ask your blessing upon us. So in all these things, uh, we reach out to you, Father, with the humble prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. So once again, uh, we're, we're trying something new. The plates are in the back of the church and over here on the side. And we haven't been passing it. Uh, you know, it's worked well in the first service. I don't know if it's going to continue to work here. We're going to see for a while and experiment with it. But what we are going to do is we're going to um, give thanks for that offering this morning. And praise to Jesus for doing it. So I'd ask you to stand. And in a symbol of worship, lift up your hands, and we'll sing the doxology together. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise the church. We ask a blessing upon the tithes and gifts and the offerings and you to multiply them so that the work of the kingdom of God would go forth. We ask a blessing on both the gift the giver and those who could, could not, and could not give. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. May we see it. Hey Susie, before you come up here, I just have one little commercial I'd like to share with these folks. If uh, you haven't noticed, I think the best way I could say this was um, David this morning took a picture of a grocery cart that he had down in Steggers, and it was very minimal, okay, what was in that cart, and it was 180 some dollars. Wow. And uh, the gas price in California right now is five bucks a gallon. Here's what I'm going to tell you. I think things are going to get stretched thinner before they get better. I am going to give you one piece of financial advice. You can take it or you can leave it. I don't really care. You continue to tithe your first fruits to God and trust Him. For the promise of the Bible says this, I have not seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. Now, I'm going to be bold since her and I have been intentionally tithing our, I know I'm irritating people right now because, you know, you can feel the irritation. Okay? preacher talks about money, you can feel the irritation. Since her and I have been intentional to tithe our income, and we didn't think we could do it when we started doing it. Because our bills were more than what we thought we could do. But we have never wanted or allowed.
want since we did that. Now, there's a lot of things we couldn't get. But God has supplied every one of our needs and has never let us down. So I just want, that's, that's my little commercial here. But I think it's something the church needs to hear. And when you talk about a tithe, what you said, Tim, it's time, gifts, and income. It's not just giving the money. If you want to get through what's going to happen, you better get a hold of Jesus. Okay, I said that long enough. Susan, may we have our children's message. Uh, I, I want to warn you guys, anybody who knows me knows that when I'm doing a project, I like to have plan A, and plan B, and usually plan C, and sometimes it doesn't work out, and, and then we wing it. Just remember, winging it's okay. Okay. There's one for your back. I thought you were coming up for the children's message. <laughs> you know what? He had the audacity to call me an old man the other day. Down the <laughs> okay. Bella, this is a gift. Okay? It's free. You don't have to pay for it. It's already paid for. Pretty cool, huh? Silly. That's all right, though, because you know what? God gave you a gift, too. He gave everybody a gift for free. It's called salvation. He said he's going to take us to heaven with him. I mean, not that's to me, that just messes up with my mind. There are so many things we take for granted, but our free salvation, it's already paid for. Unbelievable, huh? Why don't you look in the middle of that? What's there? But what do you see? You see you, right? What's in the middle of your life? You, hopefully God's with you, but you're in there, right? <laughs> and these are, that's the middle of what you're living. Now, if you look around the edge, you see a whole bunch of vines, and they're all tangled up and twisted. Our lives are like that sometimes, aren't they? There you are. Doing what God wants you to do, and then all of a sudden you make a really bad decision on something. And you sin, right? We all do it. Uh, here, here's another one. And that's okay. I mean, God will forgive us, won't he? Well, sometimes it's not you. Sometimes one of your friends does something to you, and they sin. Now the trick is, that's their problem, isn't it? They have to ask God for forgiveness. However, how do you react to it? I, sometimes we forgive them right away and sometimes we do something mean right back, don't we? Because we're human. That's our sin and we have to take that on. Except, underneath those vines, look, it's all red. That's Jesus' blood, and he forgives us for all our sins. He's already paid our way for salvation. And if you turn it over on the back, it says in the Bible that he turns our sins white as snow. And there are two memory verses there. Can I borrow yours for just a minute, honey? Thank you. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you've been saved through faith and not of your works. Remember I told you it was free, right? It's a gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And then in Isaiah 1, 18, it says, Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Okay? I, that's a silly little thing, 
it's just to remind you that salvation is a gift. We don't deserve it. Heaven knows we don't deserve it. But God is giving it to you for free. Jesus paid the price for us. And he, he can, as long as you're there, asking for forgiveness, he can take those sins and make them white as snow. Could you pray with me, please? Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for giving us that salvation. Thank you for sacrificing Jesus so that we can live. We know that none of us deserve it, and you love us anyway. I thank you, Lord, for Bella here. I thank you for the, her mom who brought her. And I thank you, Lord, for all the other little ones who maybe couldn't come today. Please be with them, Lord. Help us all to just remember how much it means to be here. Just to be able to feel the, the love, your love, magnified by the people around us. We love you, Lord, and thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir. <laughs>
some of you here today have been told that so many times that you believe it now. That you're just not good enough. In today's text, that's exactly what these new believers in Antioch were being told. They were told, you're not good enough because you haven't done our expectations on you. And therefore, you're just not good enough. Even though these folks in Antioch, and we'll talk about what that means in a little bit, even though they had asked Jesus Christ for forgiveness of sins and asked him into their heart to be their Savior, there were people that came along and said, you know what, you're not really good enough because you didn't do what I thought you should do. Now, it makes me wonder how many times down through the years that people have been told that. And then told it enough to believe it. So let's begin, before we do anything else, with a couple of truths. Jesus died for everybody, right? Not just, not just for us gathered in this church today. Not for just somebody that looks like us or acts like us. But Jesus died for everybody. And not just for people who other people thought that Jesus died for. Does that make sense there, Pastor? So a couple of truths before we go. Let's talk, let's talk about this scripture today. Paul and Barnabas, uh, we've been talking about them for quite some time now. They're about to end their first missionary journey. They don't know they're about to end it, but there's going to be a circumstance, which we just read here in chapter 15, that's going to cause them to end their first missionary journey. They have been preaching the gospel. Now they're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ in a city called Antioch. In that city, they have been, treat, been preaching to Gentiles. Does everybody understand what the Bible calls Gentiles? Don't be afraid to tell me you have no idea. They're me and you. They're non-Jewish people. Now see, here was, the, here was the deal. See, at that point of time, the Jewish folks, and maybe they still do, I don't know, they didn't feel that Gentiles were as good. They just weren't good enough. You know? But anyway, Paul and Barnabas, they're preaching. Jesus is moving. Souls are being saved. Into that fray, uh, comes these Debbie Downers. Now, Debbie, in the first service, I had a Debbie, and she said, hey, watch what you're talking about. <laughs> no disrespect, Debbie. But you know what I'm saying. So here come these Jewish folks. And they say to these new believers, you're not good enough. Because you don't do what we do. And you're just not good. So what do you think happens then? We get one of our first recorded church fights. And there is this big discussion about, you know, whether they should do this, whether they shouldn't do this. So here's, the, here's what happens. It's decided that Paul and Barnabas should go back to Jerusalem 
and talk to the elders and see what's right and what's wrong. Get what really happened here. Paul and Barnabas were doing Jesus' work, and there were fruits being made by the works that they were doing. Souls were being saved, and because of these stupid church fights, they have to go back to Jerusalem to fight a fight that has nothing to do with eternity. So they go back to Jerusalem, and they ask the elders of the church, you know, what should we do about all this? That's kind of like asking our bishops in the Methodist church, you know, what should we do about all this? Well, guess what happens? We have the second recorded church fight. Until Peter steps in. Now, Peter still carries a lot of weight. He is still the one that Jesus Christ said, you will be the head of the church. And if you remember a few Sundays ago, we preached about um, his, his interaction with Cornelius and how Peter saw this, this, this sheet, this blanket coming down from heaven in this vision. And there were all of these animals that were unclean by the Jewish standards. And, and God told him to eat. And he said, no, nah, man, I don't do that. I never did it. I never will do it. And God said to him very clearly, what I have called clean, you best not be calling unclean. And then Peter says this statement that just silenced everybody. He said, we believe salvation only comes by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. There's no argument. Because nobody can argue that statement. Well, so many times, um, I was in a ministerial meeting last Tuesday, and Pastor Lam Randy Lehman from down, the new pastor down there at Southport, he said, you know, as pastors, our primary job is twofold. We are supposed to be people of prayer and proclamation. In other words, that's my, that's my first two primary jobs. I'm supposed to be of prayer and then tell the world of Jesus Christ. And when I thought about that in this, this text today and what Paul and Barnabas were asked to do, I thought, how many times have I been asked to stop doing what is really important and do something that has nothing to do with eternity. <clears throat> well, there's three things that I really want to talk to you about today. The first one is uh, being told you're not good enough. And the second one is, if you've been told you're not good enough, enough, maybe you're believing you're not good enough. And the last one is, if you do those two, you will miss this amazing life, abundant life, that Jesus has went to that cross for you to have. You know, in Sunday school this morning, uh, Bill over here said, you know, about how the Bible talks about um, uh, rewards in heaven and things like that. And, and we were talking about um, Butch, about how he went to sleep in a recliner and a, and a truck drives through his house and he's into eternity. And we've been talking about end of life, people that have end of life, uh, they're, they're dependent upon, you know, they're not going to ask Jesus into their heart. And they're going to have this end of life thing, you know. You know, you, know what I, you know, I told Bill this morning over there in Sunday school, you know, I have had the privilege, and I'm going to say this again somewhere along the way, I have had the privilege of walking with Jesus Christ for 43 years and walking hard. And in those 43 years, I have had so many blessings in my life.
that I could not begin to count them this morning. Blessings I wouldn't have had if I wasn't walking with the Lord. You know, I, I, I know the Bible talks about those robes and crowns and stuff like that. But i got to tell you, that's good enough for me. Just the privilege of being able to walk with my Lord and Savior for all these years. That's good enough. I don't really need anything else. And so... Anyway, I forgot where I was. What was I actually talking about? That's how good you guys are listening. You have no idea. Yeah, which went to sleep in that in that chair. Well, anyhow, we'll just pick up somewhere along the way. Uh, you've been told you're not good enough. I asked them in the first service, do they still have pickup games? You know, like when I was a kid, we get down to the playground, especially the basketball. You know, I get down to Beam School, which is not no longer there, right? Uh, but we get down to Beam School, you know, and get on the parking lot. There was always 40 guys, 40 kids standing around, you know? And, and we had to pick up basketball games, you know? And what would happen is uh, you and you are the captains, okay? And then there'd be all these, these guys out there. And you pick your teams. What was the one thing that you hoped to never happen? You would be the last person picked. Because you knew that if you were the last person picked, that that really meant was you weren't good enough. Well, maybe you, like me, at times have tried your best but your best just wasn't good enough. Maybe you've been told you're a loser somewhere along the way. See, that's what was happening in Antioch. You know, salvation through Jesus Christ was preached. Uh, people were being saved only to be told that these weren't good enough. Because you didn't do what I said you should do. So therefore, you are not Good enough. And please don't tell me that that still doesn't happen. Uh, Stella. Stella Kazilla. What, what, how are you going to go through life with a name like that? Stella Kazilla. <laughs> uh, she was over here screaming in the first service, you know. <laughs> it was a perfect example. I baptized her as a baby. Now, there will be church people, maybe, in her life. I'm not going to say denominations or anything like that. It's going to say, you know what, Stella? That wasn't good enough. Unless you were baptized exactly the way I was baptized, it didn't work. God, God didn't do anything to you then. You know, it wasn't good enough. She was raised in another denomination. So she was told, unless you speak in tongues, you're not really saved. You're not good enough. So don't, don't tell me, though, that somewhere along the way, um, that don't happen yet today because there are churches all over the world and of course we're talking about other churches not our church right <laughs> there's churches all over the world that have uh, holier than thou hypocrites in the pews that are constantly telling somebody you're not good enough I want to tell you a flash when I was first saved even after 43 years of chasing hard after God, and I have chased him hard, I can say that in my life. I'm still not perfect. And neither are you. Hmm? And
And just because someone isn't perfect by somebody else's standards, that does not mean that you're not saved. True salvation, as Peter said, is only by the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Point two. You've been told it so many times that now you believe you're not good enough. There's somebody sitting here today that believes that. Do you remember Charles Schultz? What did Charles Schultz give us? Okay, somebody said it. Some, there was, among the mumblings, there was somebody Peanuts. that said, Peanuts! Peanuts! Snoopy! Charles Schultz emulated this text when he created Charlie Brown. Because Charlie Brown was always told he wasn't good enough. What did they call Charlie Brown? Blockhead. blockhead. You blockhead, Charlie Brown. And Charlie Brown heard that so many times that he believed it. And so what did Charlie Brown say after every time he messed up? Good, good grief. Don't you wish sometimes when I read Peanuts that Charlie Brown would just win one baseball game? That, that was my third one. That he could kick that football before Lucy pulls it out and he falls on his head. Or that he might just pick a good Christmas tree one year. How many times have you felt like Charlie Brown? The world's just called you a blockhead. You're just not good enough. And all you can say is good grief. Good, good grief. I don't know how those people at Antioch felt when they were told they weren't good enough, but I believe some of them had to believe that was true. The devil would love for you to doubt who you are, and that is that you have been adopted into the family of God. And you are now a child of the king. And you mean something. When she said, Rebecca, when she, not this Rebecca, sorry Rebecca. Last week when Rebecca said that she was fearfully and wonderfully made and God made her that way for a reason. Gave me hope for Charlie Brown. You see, if the devil can convince you that, that you're not good enough and you believe it, uh, he knows that you will not live, you will not testify to that redeemed life that Jesus Christ has given you. That redeemed, abundant life. And once again, Salvation only comes through Jesus Christ. So my friends, do not allow voices to try to convince you of something you're not. And thirdly, you miss this amazing life that Jesus sacrificed for you to have. This is what Peter said to these Jewish guys. He said, why are you tempting God? Why? Why are you telling God he's not good enough for these people? That's heavy, man. Why are you putting the yoke? Why, why are you making it so hard on these new believers to keep a standard that our fathers and I could not keep? I tell you this morning, living for Jesus is not easy, but it's amazing.
Let's forget heaven for just a moment. Let's forget, you know, this promise of the place that, that is just beyond what we can think. Where would you be right now without Jesus Christ? Where would you be right now without Jesus Christ? And being who I am and the position that I am in, I know some of your stories. And if you would not have Jesus Christ, you would be in a very bad place today. See, I believe what, what Bill Doika said in Sunday school this morning. I believe that once you have accepted the, the true salvation that can only come from Jesus Christ, nothing else compares. Nothing. Satan wants you to be so sidetracked from that abundant life that you don't be the testimony that God created you to be. I'm almost done. This sermon or this text, it's a two-edged sword. Some people have been told they're not good enough because they're not living up to somebody's standards. Then some people are telling other folks they're not good enough because you're not living up to my standards. Either way, this abundant, amazing life that Jesus went to the cross to give you isn't being lived out in your everyday life. By no means is this a free pass not to continue to grow and be more like Jesus. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. It's not a free pass for that. But here's a simple check. Is your spiritual life right now being lived out in the assurance of what Jesus did and is doing in your life. Is that what your spiritual life is right now? Or are you living in distraction and have very little peace about just about anything? Jesus said, peace I give unto you, not the peace that this world is trying to sell, but peace I give to you. Put that little test to you. Do you have peace in your life about just about anything right now? Because if you don't, well, maybe you've been told you're not good enough for somebody, or you're telling somebody else you're not good enough. Please, 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 do not try to live up to somebody else's standard or expect someone else to live to your standard. You know, Karen, I hope I don't embarrass you here. When Devon was here, and we were sitting downstairs, he went over to him and said something to this. I don't know if I can quote you verbatim, okay? Uh, but you said something like, I, I guess nobody's gonna wanna listen to my piano playing after that. What did he tell you? says, and we'll close with this, we have to believe that salvation comes only by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, thank you. I just thank you. I can't even say anything else. Just thanks. You're a good God. In Jesus' name. Thank you.
37, only trust him. We'll see one verse. Hey, uh, just a reminder, anybody that uh, wants to support Camp Allegheny, we're having a chicken barbecue today. I would call ahead because one time we went out and they were already sold out. Um, but, you know, if you're planning on going out, I'd, I'd call ahead. Okay, only trust you, buddy. I believe that's 337. We're going to sing this one verse. Thank you.